This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Benefits in kind is our next section, and it in, this term includes non-cash benefits received by the employee, um, unless they are specifically exempt. So benefits in kind. So, for example, um, you are given. Um, a car to use, a company car to use, to drive for business purposes. How do you value the use of that? You've had the benefit because of virtue of your employment, so we need a value. Um, it doesn't have a cash value, so the revenue have introduced lots of rules and regulations which put a cash value on the use of certain assets as a part of your um, employment. Uh, we need to quantify the use of that benefit. Now there are certain benefits which are completely exempt, they're not taxable. We don't need to put a cash value on them and this is a list of them. I'm not going to read, you're more than capable of reading the whole list so I'm just going to point out one or two of them and if you want to pause um, the lecture so that you can read through the whole list first um, and then do that that's fine with me I haven't got a problem with that but I'm not going to read every single one because you're more than capable of reading um, what they are so um, certain ones I'm going to pick out because they come up more often um, the examiner likes to throw an exempt benefit in there every so often just to see whether or not um, you uh, know how to deal with it um, always include it right exempt never just ignore something and the best way to to learn this list in effect is by not learning it if if you know what i mean so i'm we in this lecture you will find out how to do calculations for benefits for cars fuel vans living accommodation use of assets gift of assets those are the main ones that you will learn if you haven't learned or been taught how to do a benefit in kind and it comes up on the list then it's probably exempt so it's it's a kind of converse way of learning things so rather than learn the whole list there are certain things that you need to point to, I'm, I'm going to pick out um, because they come up um, quite often so uh, first one canteen must be available to all staff if it says directors only then it is a benefit in kind on them and there will be information in the question that allows you to do that calculation. If it's for all staff, it's exempt. Removal costs up to £8,000. So if you have a job in London and you get a job in Glasgow, which is in Scotland, and your employer pays for you to move your house and to move your furniture and move your family, and say it costs, I don't know, £12,000 to do so, then the first eight is exempt and you will only pay tax on the four. Um, what else do we have? Oh, mobile phone. One mobile phone. Um, Christmas parties or parties entertaining up to £150 per person. Um, 500 pounds annual exemption 500 pounds per employee for medical treatment um, to help you to return to work after you've been away um, oh this is one this might come up um, contributions towards household costs such as heat and light where you work from home six pounds a week um, let me have look incidental costs of um, overnight expenses five pound a night in the UK and ten pound a night if you're overseas it's not going to stretch very far so those are just a few of them if you want to pause the recording in the lecture and read through those carefully as I say don't learn them as a list you need to learn the benefits in kind that there are calculations for and if something else comes up that you know you haven't learned a calculation for 
then it's probably exempt. So let's have a look at what is and what isn't a taxable benefit, the principles behind it, the amount assessed is generally speaking the cost of providing the benefit. Um, where an in-house benefits are provided, the amount assessed is the marginal cost incurred. Just so you know what those principles are. So vouchers exchangeable for goods and services are taxable. So we're in the taxable benefit here. Unless specifically exempt, which is unusual. So if your employer gives you Marks and Spencers vouchers to spend in Marks and Spencers and they are exchangeable for goods, services or cash, then the value of that voucher is taxable. One of the main ones that you're going to have to be able to calculate in an exam is living accommodation. So there are no taxable benefits if the accommodation is job related and there are three scenarios where that um, rule applies okay one where it's necessary for the per per performance of your duty i if you were a caretaker the better performance of your duties where it's customary to provide living accommodation such as if you worked in a hotel and they provided you with a room you wouldn't pay tax on that or where there's a special threat to the employee's security and they live in accommodation that is secure so for example that would probably be um, the uk prime minister he lives at number 10 downing street because he needs to be secure and safe. Um, he needs to be protected in that sense. Uh, so it's for his security that that is the case. Comes up occasionally. That mm, thinking, probably multiple choice question. If you've got to pick out a scenario, um, which of the following is job related accommodation? And there would be three or four, and you may have to pick one or two of those out. Um, so just be aware of those. But there's no calculations involved, simply because they are. Um, it's not taxable. Um, if it is not uh, job related, then we need to work out the benefit in kind. Now there are two basic benefits. This is the the basic one. So if accommodation is not job related, it's the higher of the annual value or the rent paid by the employer. OK, now that can be reduced by any contribution that you make. Now, the question will clearly show annual value and or rent. So choose the correct one. And then if they make a contribution, so say the annual rate is, I don't know, £5,000 a year, and the employee pays £10 a month, which is £1,200 a year, you would work out that 5000 take off the 1200 the balance would be the benefit in kind. That's the basic one. Now, there is also a second benefit in kind with accommodation where the value is greater than £75,000. And that formula... You need to learn. So the cost of providing the accommodation, whatever it is, that's normally in the question, minus 75,000 times the official rate of interest. Now, if that isn't included and it doesn't tell you what it is in the question, where will you find the information? Correct. In the rates. Don't guess. Always check it out. The cost of providing the accommodation is the purchase price of the property, what they paid for it, plus any improvements before the start of the tax year. So that's the basic rule. The cost of providing accommodation plus any improvements before the 6th of April 2022. 
minus 75,000 times the official rate of interest. That's the benefit in kind. However, as with most rules with tax, there is a but. But if the employer bought the accommodation more than six years before first providing it, then you use market value. Now, why? To get more tax. Because what we're saying is, if we bought it 20 years ago, in that 20 years, the value of that property has gone up dramatically. So it would then be the market value when it was first occupied by the employee. You use that instead. Okay, use that figure instead. Because house prices have gone up, obviously, dramatically. So let's have a look at example number two here, which shows us how that works. So Jones, the sales manager, occupies a flat owned by his employer. Now, it doesn't give you any details about it being job related. So don't make any assumptions. Just take the question as it's written. Annual value is 4000 and Jones pays his employer £500 a year for the use of the flat. So first things first, benefit in kind is the annual value, which is 4000 less a contribution. Now, the flat was originally purchased in 2009 for £100,000. Jones moved into the property in 2021 when it was worth £120,000. And we are to calculate the total benefit. So we've done the basic one. Now we've got to do the higher one. So the higher one. Now, because this was bought more than six years ago, we're going to use the market value. So that's 120,000 minus 75,000 times 2%, which is 900 pounds. So that is the total figure. Now that benefit figure there will be added to his other income, his salary, any bonus that he receives, Jones receives as a sales manager. And that would then go into the pro forma that we looked at earlier in the chapter. And the total of which will go to his income tax computation so that we can then work out um, his tax bill. Now, there are sometimes expenses connected with living accommodation. I'm just going to draw a line there because this is a different benefit below. It may be that heating, lighting, if they are in paid by the employer, then they need to be added in to the benefit in kind. Now, if it's job related, any expenses are limited to 10% of their employment income. So there may be a third expense that needs to go on there, um, but the question will tell you. Um, how that works. So that's your first major one, living accommodation. We've got a basic expense, which is the annual value less any contribution. The higher expense if the property was worth more than 75000 when it was bought. If it's more than six years since it was bought, then use market value and use the formula. And then potentially a third expense, which is either heat or light, gardening, cleaning, that sort of thing if it's paid for by the employer. So that's one of the one of the benefits in kind that will come up in an exam. They, uh, sometimes they come up as um, section C questions where you'll get a list of benefits and then you've got to work out the income tax. Um, sometimes it comes up as a, a small multiple choice questions where you'll have to work out the various benefits. These next two benefits, they're linked. Um, and sometimes these are attributed to um, living accommodation. So potentially um, the accommodation might be a rather nice place by a lake and there's a boat that goes with it. So that would be a use of an asset. And that also is a benefit in kind. Um, if that's the case, add that in. Sometimes it, it, it's rare, but it, um, 
if that's the case, just add it in. So if you have use of an asset, such uh, the normal ones that come in question, exam questions are use of computers, use of TVs, that sort of thing. Then it is the higher of 20% of the market value when it was first provided, 20%, um, or if the rent, uh, the asset is rented, then it's whatever the rent, uh, the, the rent paid. But it's normally that one, 20% of the value of the asset. So if somebody is, a, your employer provides you with a, a PC TV and it's worth £1,000, that was its value when it was given to you, then 20% of that is a benefit in kind on you and it would be added to your other benefits with your salary to find your employment income, which then goes into your income tax computation. Now, sometimes in an exam question, they ask you to do that and then they say in the second part, oh, well, we gave it to them. So this PC TV, we bought it as an employer, we own it, and we let you borrow it and you pay a benefit in kind. And then after two years, we decide, well, we'll give it to you. You can have it. Now, that is an asset that you have been gifted by virtue of your employment. So it's important that that also is a benefit in kind. So if it's new, if it's brand new, basically you get tax on whatever they paid for it. However, if you've previously used it, as in the PCTV situation, then when it's given to you, you're taxed on the higher of the market value of the asset when it was given to you, or the market value of the asset when it was first made available, i.e. a thousand pounds, less any benefits that you've paid tax on. So you have to work that out. Now, it isn't for cars, it isn't for vans, because they've got separate rules altogether. So let's have a look at an example and see how this worked. So Gerald's employer bought a TV for his use 1st of June 2021, cost £900. On the 6th of April 22, Gerald was given that TV by his employee when its market value was now £250. You are to calculate the benefit assessable on Gerald in respect of the gift on the basis of A, if he made no payment for the TV, and B, if he paid £250 for it. So they're saying, I'm going to give it to you, and you can have it as a gift, or I'm going to give it to you, but you've got to pay £250 for it. Now, he's only been using it, if you notice, for 10 months. So all benefits in kind are pro rata and this is in a new tax year. Be careful of dates, okay? Be careful of dates. That's a different tax year, okay? This is in 21, 22 when that was given to him, and this is in 22, 23. So be careful. Read the question carefully, okay? So always, always show your workings. As I've said before, you, you rarely get marks for the answers. It's all about rules. Do you know it? And have you applied it? So let's have a look at how that works in the answer. If you would like to have a go, pause the recording and the lecture now, have a go at trying to work it out and then resume the um, recording and have a look at the answer, see if you've got it right. But I'm going to do that now. I'm going to give you a moment just to pause because now I'm going to have a look at the answer. All right. So the gift of the TV, if we gift it to him, now, the market value when it was first made available was £900. Now, he's already paid tax on the benefit. Now, that's the benefit. So, in 21-22, 
he paid £150 benefit in kind. Therefore, the taxable benefit would be the reduction of those, which is £750. Now, that's greater than, and the rule was it had to be higher than, the market value when it was given to him, which was £250. So show both. Always show the workings. Oops. And you know that it's higher than, because that's the rule. And then you've applied the rule. Now, if they sell it to him for £250, we've got the benefit calculated above, less what he paid for it. So he will only pay tax on the reduced amount because he has contributed towards it.